Hello, horse-loving viewers, and welcome to Animal World, our co-inhabitants. On today's program, we present part one of our two-part interview with well-known vegetarian telepathic horse communicator and founder of Himalayan Herbal, a company offering Ayurvedic herbs for horses, Gaynor Davenport of the UK, who shares some of the many amazing insights she's gained from our equine companions. Often referred to as Britain's horse whisperer, Miss Davenport began her career as a horse communicator in 1996. Since then, Gaynor Davenport has helped hundreds of clients all over the country. Here we see an example of how telepathic communication can help to resolve issues between horse and caregiver. Olivia Clark notices that her horse companion, Macy, is feeling uncomfortable when ridden, but doesn't know why. As someone experienced in conversing with horses, Ms. Davenport acts as a bridge between them. She can feel the shoulder coming up and back but it it's the the tiny bit of the the edge of the saddle do you feel that your saddle is comfortable at the moment comfortable for me or her comfortable for her no no it isn't no. it's slipping forward and back yes forward. As Gaynor Davenport further went on to explain, when she communicated with Macy, she learned that the source of the horse's discomfort is not the saddle. Macy said that Miss Clark is pulling too tightly on the reins, and this is causing her pain. As soon as Miss Davenport conveyed this message to Olivia Clark, Macy visibly relaxed, and both the rider and Gaynor Davenport were assured that the issue had been resolved. Ms. Davenport first discovered her innate ability to communicate with horses as a child. I began to understand that I could hear the, the horses. When I was a little girl, I was about four and a half, five, and um, I was with my auntie, and she used to take me in the mornings to see a horse that was in my grandfather's fields and um, I used to take a little bag which had got stars on it and I would fill it with bread and I would take it to this horse and the horse's name was Dolly and this day she said she was going she was leaving I wouldn't see her she was going away and I started to cry. I didn't want to leave her. And I said to my auntie, she's dying. She's dying. And my auntie said, come away, come away. And they took me away screaming. And the next morning, as I went down with my, with my mom to my auntie's, um, I glanced over, was looking, in, as you do as a child, and Dolly wasn't there. She'd passed away. She was in the field. They found her where I'd left her that day, in the field the next morning. I could hear the sounds, and she was telling me she was going away. Some telepathic animal communicators report receiving messages from animals through an inner knowing. Others say they receive messages through visual images. But for Gaynor Davenport, communication comes from the subtle vibrations she feels, usually through touch. I do believe in touch. People will ask me the questions, do you hear this through your fingers? And my answer is, I don't hear anything through my fingers as such. But the very fine feelings when the position of the body moves, I'm able to hear the sounds of the horse making the movement of the body. Um, I can say that I hear 
through a vibrational sound. When I'm speaking now, I will speak in, in these like short out short sentences or short words because that is what I'm translating. It's like what now. My answer is in the beginning was the sound and the sound be became the word and it was before the vowel sounds that come in that I hear. So there is no A, E, I, O, U. Book, 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 B, K, book. It's that that I hear and that is how I translate it. Yes, I think that is what they hear in, from us because they are actually communicating with us as well. When Ms Davenport communicates with a horse, she prefers that the caregiver not provide any background information. I will say to the client, I don't need to ask anything before from yourself because we put, may put a logical slant on the answers. Um, let me communicate with the horse and then if you want me to ask questions, I will ask them and I will get an answer that will actually answer the question for them. Horses are highly sensitive. Ms Davenport has learned that they can detect our moods, our thoughts and even the state of our health. I use a soft tone in my voice because they recognise that I make a sound and they know that I'm okay. I think you should offer them your friendship, you should offer them your heart, you go in open. If you show fear, they actually smell that fear. They actually smell cancer, I've, they've told me, and they have been correct. So they do, they do smell whether how we are. And even if we show that we like them, they still smell that apprehension. When the horses are being ridden, they can they listen to our thoughts. It's not only the body that is, is giving out messages, that's only the outside, but they actually can hear our thoughts. So any anxiety that we have, we actually can put it into the horse, which I think does need to be, um, be known. And for me, I feel that people that ride horses, they must leave their worries and cares at the gate and just enjoy being on such a beautiful creature. That's very, very important. Next, one of Ms Davenport's clients, Sarah Morehouse, discusses how Gaynor Davenport helped to restore her horse companion's quality of life. Initially, this horse was away with a rider and he was quite badly damaged um, in his shoulder and, and spine. After an operation, Gaynor came to see him and insisted that we bring him back home because he was recovering in someone else's field. Gaynor came and communicated with him and discovered that he had quite a lot of other injuries um, and other sort of issues with the way he'd been ridden previously, um, even things into his, in his neck and his ears and the top of his head. Um, and, you know, we'd have to be very patient and um, over six or eight months just just to walk him and virtually start from the beginning again. And she was with, was with us every step of the way talking to him. She would work with the physio to work on particular parts of it, on his body, just really to release the enormous amount of tension that prevented him from doing 
pretty much anything. Um, and, and each time she came and treated him, you could just see his personality also coming out with it because he was very repressed when he came back here, would stand at the back of the stable. And then once he could sort of communicate with Gaynor and, and, and tell, tell her what the issues were, it, it freed him up. And, you know, he started to feel a lot better. And he wanted to interact more with, you know, with everything around him, with the other horses and, and with us. And she's been with us every step of the way when I started riding him after. So he probably had 18 months off without being ridden. And she was here when I first rode him and so was able to talk to him and communicate to me how I could help him, how we could help each other. Um, and, well, she's absolutely, well, uh, transformed him. And obviously any time we've got any problems, she'll come and talk to him. Was there anything in particular that she said that was kind of um, exceptional, like anything on a personal level or anything on a relationship level or anything like that? Um, I'm the only one that rides him for a start. Um, so we have a very sort of special relationship like that. And also the particular way I ride him and the way um, I sit is absolutely crucial. Um, because the girl that rode him before was, was very light, much lighter than me, but very um, tough on him and would sit and, and drive him and he absolutely worries terribly if you were to sit down and, and try and drive him forward. He just panics, completely panics. So you have to ride him very lightly and very sort of, you know, kindly. We continue to, to learn together, really, with, with Gaynor's help. But he's an absolutely lovely, lovely man. Ms. Morehouse was encountering challenges when transporting her horse companion in a trailer. Her horse became anxious and was constantly shifting his weight and pawing the floor while travelling. But she did not know what was causing his anxiety. After communicating with the horse, Ms. Davenport had this observation. The actual movement of, of the, the movement of the traveller going forward is different to his balancing I'm going to say the actual stay apparator from the elbow to there right. is finding it difficult to balance that bit Upon learning that the horse companion was feeling unstable and unsafe, Sarah Morehouse kindly made several minor changes inside the trailer, including adjusting the rear gate to give him more support while traveling. Gaynor Davenport believes that horses play an important role on our planet. They are great teachers. They try to teach us patience. They try to teach us to understand them at their level. They also try to teach us a helpfulness. It teaches us to understand, to also to have compassion and to start thinking again. Knowing how sensitive and intelligent horses are, Ms. Davenport is deeply disturbed when she sees them mistreated. She recounts one such incident. Years and years and years ago, I went to Tipperary. My first husband took me to the races and I ran away screaming, just screaming on the top of my voice back to the car because I couldn't stand the use of the whip. How dare anyone let a horse that has done his best be whipped? That's what I don't like. I am disgusted with it. Out of their compassion for animals, Gaynor Davenport and her daughter Eloise have chosen to avoid meat. I couldn't eat meat because I couldn't digest meat. I wasn't meant to eat meat. My husband, when he went away to Spain to work, Eloise was just 10, 
and she did something very strange. She went into the freezer and she said, I'm glad Dad's gone because I can take the meat out the fridge now and we're not having any meat anymore, Mommy. And that was it. And so, yes, your, the food and what we eat is very important. Do horses know how to cure their own illnesses? Can horses talk with cats? Do they remember people they haven't seen for many years? Find out the answers to these and many more questions tomorrow on Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants, as we present the final part of our discussion with extraordinary horse communicator Gaynor Davenport. For more details on Gaynor Davenport, please visit www.himalayanherbal.com. Thank you for your kind presence today on our program. May all beings live in peace, abundance and happiness. For more details, please see www.suprememastertv.com forward slash aw.